G'day, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your very own smart planter, which will measure the soil moisture and also self water when it needs to. I'll show you how to use the microbit interface and the only components we're going to use are a microbit, an expansion board, some very simple electronics that you should be able to find relatively cheaply. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to want to do with our smart planter is to work out if it actually needs to be watered. And we're going to do that by first measuring the moisture of the soil. Now, how we can do that is by using a soil moisture sensor, uh, which is either one that you can purchase off the shelf, or you can make one using some nails that you connect to the zero and one port. The concept is the same, but I'll show you how we code for this as well. First thing we're going to do is we need to create an electric circuit using our pin one and pin zero. And we're going to actually write onto pin one that we're going to set the maximum value. So we're going to allow electricity to flow out of pin one at the maximum value. In this case, it's 1023. If you think about your binary numbers, I think that's the 12th binary number as well. Then we're actually going to need to create a variable, something that we can measure. So I'm going to call that moisture reading. We're going to set the moisture reading to be the reading that we actually grab from pin zero. And we can do that by saying down here at pins, analog read pin, and we've got pin zero there. So we're sending out a signal here and our moisture reading is what we pick up at pin zero on the other side. Now we're using analog because we can get a range between zero and 1023. If we said digital, it would either be on or off. And that's not what we're really after. We want some kind of a range. Next, we're gonna turn off pin one. So we're gonna go analog, uh, write pin one to zero in one to zero and that way we can actually turn off that signal we've sent through now that we've got that we want to actually do something with that moisture reading and what we can do is we can first show the number go to our variable and we'll go show moisture reading and then next we're going to have some kind of condition so if the reading is high we're going to do something if it's low we're going to do something else and that's where we're going to get to with our if statement so we're actually going to say if the moisture reading is above a certain number, so let's say if it's over 700, you could say that the, the soil is pretty moist, therefore we won't need to actually turn on a pump. However, if it's below, then we can uh, see if we can turn on a, a pump. So we'll actually set this to below 700. So if it's below, make sure we have our moisture reading in here. If the moisture reading is below 700, then something is going to happen. Now, because I'm using a pump, which is essentially just a motor, I need to drive this motor. And how we can do that is by using some simple expansion boards. You could potentially connect it to your uh, micro bit between the three and the ground uh, pins. But if you have an expansion board, which I highly recommend investing in, there's lots of different types. The one I have is uh, a DF robot, and I'll link it below as well. You can simply search in the extensions component, put in the code that you need to uh, for your particular um, expansion board. This is the one for my one. I'll share it in the link below as well. And then you click on this section here, which will then activate all these different blocks that you can start using. Specifically uh, for mine, I can control servos uh, and motors and so forth. We're gonna keep it pretty simple. We're gonna connect to the first motor port and we're gonna turn the speed up to 255, which essentially just means I'm gonna turn on my pump if the moisture reading is below 700. Now, I don't want this to go forever. I only want it to really go for, let's say two seconds, put an overwater, and then I actually have to turn off the motor. So I'm gonna go back here and turn off the motor. Motor one, and that's pretty much our code. This will run once. What if I want it to run a few times or maybe all day? I'll just do it four times for now. And it will keep running and hopefully eventually my moisture reading will be high enough that it won't actually need to activate the pump. All right, I think that's pretty much it for our code. We can actually see if that's gonna work right now. Before testing it out, I'll just show you quickly how I've connected it. I've got my pin zero and pin ones connected directly to the soil moisture tester. And I've also got my little motor connected to the motor port, which are positive and negative as well. All right, so time to actually test it out. What we've got here is I'm gonna turn it on. Uh, and I've got it in a position which is already pretty moist, so our reading is 910. So there's no pump action there. 920. I'll try moving it over somewhere which is a bit drier. As it popped out, it actually took a really low reading. Uh, and we can see the pump turned on. Again, we've got 460. 
So it should turn on again. And we can see the water filling up again. Awesome. There you go. Give it a go. See if it works for you. Uh, if you have any questions, ask in the comments below.